Hello, everybody. I am Brian Mullins the Fox. After the roast game topical audit, by the time this video premieres, has fully premiered. This will be that one video accounting for everything, commentary, and venting off about it all in the same video. Rant. Let's look at everything and see if it all adds up. Number one, calories, even with it being mostly subjective anyway. Two, self-contradictory consumption statistics that are spread around by mainstream article after article and blindly believed to be true by the dishonest yet delusional public. Three, Christmas food waste statistics that only I have been talking about for years at this point. Four, the roast game death toll, which is still considered fact to this day. Five, roast preparation time. Six, literal forensic evidence. Seven, anatomy and meat choice. Eight, the Canadian roast game slash Canadian roast game theory. Number nine, the real life example of the roast game theory or Nicholas Justin Emmett of New Lexington, Ohio. Number 10, the roast game theory itself. The series starring the main host, me, Detective Brian Mullins the Fox. 11. American Christmas Dinner Statistical Data Theft or American Statisticians, Journalists, and Publishers Stealing British Christmas Dinner Calories slash Statistics as if it were to be our own. Which, by the time I'm recording this, this video has almost 600 views. 12. The Post-Roast Game Christmas Dinner Flavor and Taste Saga. 13. The Roast Game Numbers by the Year 1998 to 2016. Wasted Ham Slash Turkey Statistics and the Number of Children That Were Spared in 2017. 14. Hypothetical Christmas Dinner Numbers by the Year 1998 to 2016. Either more money was spent on candy than food, or you'd only be able to cut off the centerpiece price-wise during the roast game era to account for the actual price, on average, of Christmas dinner. And 15. All the roast game era statistics in both countries, America and Canada, systematic analysis. Instead of this being a commentary video where I only do math just to verify whether or not all of these things add up, it's to explain it all in the most logically consistent and completely factual way possible. 1. If the calories add up for the centerpiece choice of a child's butt meat as the Christmas roast that it was during the roast game era, then it wasn't turkey, ham, chicken, or roast beef. 2. If the quote-unquote consumption statistics, or so you can call them, have to be so contradictory that you can't even realize until years later that they were based on statistics from another country and only another country, then you blindly believing it is cold hard proof that not only are a lot of people statistically illiterate, but their blind faith makes them all look stupid. 3. If it's more than likely that you'll find out Christmas food waste statistics then you'll then you'd ever see consumption stats when it comes to this topic of Christmas dinner during the roast game era or the roast game itself that concerns the same era, then all of them were wasted and not even consumed at all. You can't consume a meat product and waste it at the same time. You have to either do one or the other. You're not wasting the food if you're eating it, you're consuming it, and you're not consuming the food product when you're wasting it. 4. The roast game death toll just simply adds up in both countries perfectly. 5. Either it doesn't take longer than it actually does, you'll burn the house down, or it wasn't ham or turkey that each of them prepared for Christmas dinner during the roast game era. 6. There's literal forensic evidence that would surely only lead to the overarching conclusion surrounding the roast game as a past phenomenon. Number 7. The child's butt meat was used as the centerpiece meat choice during the roast game era or 1998 to 2016. 8. The Canadian roast game happened around the same time the American phenomenon did, and the Canadian roast game theory is a confirmed theory just like the American version that is based on the same said phenomenon itself in both countries. 9. The real-life example of the roast game theory was, and still is, four years later, the best decision to present actual evidence of this past phenomenon myself to the general public on February 24th, 2019. Number 10. 
The Roast Game Theory, through many techniques, factors, and measurements, explains who and what the child was, the house each slaughter took place in, in what room it took place in, the weight of the child, his or her butt meat as the centerpiece and the weight of such, and, finally, the logical conclusion behind what happens in the end, or at the end of the day, in other words. 11. America, if you really had statistics surrounding the quote-unquote traditional Christmas dinner you all supposedly loved and admired, why the fuck would you steal Christmas dinner calories slash statistics from another country and use it as your own when you can't if you actually had your own statistics? This would not be the action of a country, a group of statisticians, or journalists in the mainstream media or alternative media that has actual statistics to come by. Not the same old faulty or downright false estimates like the 22 million number that can't be backed up or checked if it's accurate or not. Numbers with no methodology behind it and downright factual inaccuracies behind it all. 12. Yes, we can objectively observe flavors and tastes when it comes down to the roast game and the roast game era. If it wasn't ham or turkey, then that's why Christmas dinner statistics don't exist during the roast game era. 13. The Roast Game Numbers by the Year is the first ever showcase of statistics that can and has been proven to be factually correct by using logic, facts, evidence, proof, and reasoning. 14. Either Christmas dinner alone doesn't really cost that much, or you'd have to cut off the centerpiece to actually get the real price of the average American Christmas dinner during the Roast Game era. Same goes for Canada. And finally, 15, the systematic analysis is a perfect summary of all the facts on the table when it comes to the roast game in the roast game era in both America and Canada overall. So after considering all of this to be the case and the truth, does it all really add up at the end of the day? And the answer obviously is yes, because it simply fucking does. Now here's the rant. I'll warn you all that this upcoming rant will be more epic than the 20 fucking years rant from nearly two years ago. It all falls perfectly into place. After well over five years, over a day's worth of total content surrounding and concerning the roast game in general, nothing else in the whole wide world would ever explain how logically simple it is to point out logical inconsistencies, factual errors on my opposition side, and moral inconsistencies when it comes to the drama surrounding people that have tried and failed to shut me down and the conversation with it. Thanksgiving is the best example of no matter how contradictory the quote-unquote statistics may be from website to website or to other people, there is a clear barrier being set between what's factually accurate and what's factually inaccurate. You can't just do a bare minimum Google search, copy a URL link to a Q&A website, giving only the answers you want out of confirmation bias, and complain that the furry on the internet is supposedly not doing what you ask him to or give you evidence that you all want to see, like police reports? Are you shitting me? Police reports? Which are faulty at best or completely useless at worst. You can't just bully or harass somebody off the internet, or at least try to and fail, all the while do so while you all are completely insecure about your childhood and how a good portion of your life may just be a lie. Families for nearly two entire goddamn decades, or if not two entire goddamn decades, have lied about what they ate as the centerpiece of Christmas dinner. Families literally ate their own children as their Christmas roast, in quotations, after slaughtering them for not believing in Christmas. And most importantly, there is absolutely no conspiracy to either hide the supposed Christmas hammer turkey number slash statistics that don't actually exist and can't exist in reality because of the roast game era, or no conspiracy would be required to murder a child spontaneously and use their cutoff ass as the roast that would typically be featured in the middle of the fucking dinner table. Me being Brian Mullins the Fox for well over five years now, half a decade, have experienced internet drama, shitty debate tactics from opponents in the past, and how far they'll go to try and fail to shut down the overall conversation about the very topic of the roast game. 
even when I got banned permanently from Debate.org, you know, that website that doesn't exist anymore. I'm not constantly bringing all of this up because I'm somehow this perpetual victim. So much to the point where going out to touch grass will never be enough and that supposedly I didn't deserve this even though I did because it was worth the progress all these years later. This should be remembered because the overarching context of it all should matter. And that's the problem. We live in a post-context society where no context is needed before people go out to just spew these false narratives narratives about you, accuse you of being a conspiracy theorist, accuse you of hiding evidence, while ironically dismissing any evidence that's either inconvenient to them or inconvenient to their false narrative or unironic conspiracy theory that they've peddled in the past. They are the real conspiracy theorists all along, and that to a certain extent, not to the point where I become a lol cow, but to the point where I understand their entire position and I just consider their position completely non-existent at this point. Including the very same idiot or going gone four plus years ago that shitted on me for saying that the USSR was a republic, just like all the other Soviet republics that existed before. It's a republic of republics, which is actually pretty fucking rich and hilarious at the same fucking time. What happened to me during the entire roast game triathlon drama can be summed up perfectly with a practical extrapolation of basic Sun Tzu logic. Box your enemies in on three sides. The roast game calorie drama, the Brian Mullins the Fox vs. Going Gone debacle of 2018, and the roast game theory drama with Star Shadow offer them a way out that you can control the grandly autistic internet art theft drama between me, Vashlin Set, and all the other Spurgs that try to get me fucking banned and failed by encouraging people to mass flag my accounts, including my DeviantArt and then get them then and there. Expose them all of being hypocrites by either stealing art like Star Shadow and DMC2103, or side with the hypocrites who stole art and only throw me under the bus in their eyes for their own convenience. Or rather, inconvenience. Cause I'm still here. If you provide evidence or proof of your claim, instead of the opponent considering the evidence and potentially changing their entire fucking position on the overall issue or topic, they shift the burden of proof because things apparently got too real for them. These fucking people, all of them, had something to hide this entire time. They all live and have lived a massive lie, and little kids back then never got to see these unlucky motherfuckers get to live to the fullest extent now. These fucking people don't even realize that the only people who are proverbially digging themselves deeper into their own fucking grave are these people themselves. They're the reason why people like me exist. Why I'm an atheist. Why I talk about shit like the roast game and other things. People who not only question the status quo, but get down to the point so fucking well that it gets to the point that it scares the shit out of all of them. These motherfucking people have no fucking place to lecture anybody, let alone me, on how much of a fucking failure in life I am. When I've learned a lot more value than they can hope to achieve. A lot more about you fuckwits who prey on newer members of your toxic Discord servers, internet circles, and even comment sections. You made me this way. All of you did. And the reason that after over four goddamn years later, none of them seem to fully fucking get it now. It is actually surprising as shit to me. I've debated people before. The experience sucked in such a post-truth, post-fact, and post-context society that will get you cancelled for doing so much as deep research on a topic you can get statistical and conversational returns on. And also some free engagement. Thanks, by the way. I get it. Life doesn't make any sense. People who are this dense and this fucking retarded, also, people that are morally dubious, can't even remotely come up with an argument if their lives depended on it. Did you all know that it's an obvious sign of low IQ when you refuse to engage in hypotheticals, no matter how ridiculous it may sound to you? If so, you've just gained a shit ton of brain cells, and I commend you for it. And for those idiots I threw under the bus in the first place in the past, they've lost way more than all their brain cells at this point. They lost their character. They lost their reputation. They lost basically everything they couldn't come back from anyway. Which brings us to why we are here. Which brings us to 2023. After so many years of so much shit, I commend you all for watching this goddamn video. I commend you all for supporting me throughout these years, through good or ill. 
up and down, good or bad, I still made it. I still got to this point. I'm still vindicated. I was still right all a fucking long. And with that being said, I bid you all a good farewell on this topic as usual. I am Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. See you then.